All right, so the first system today is the five steps to a conversation. Um, this is the first one you should always learn. So this is a system to build impulse. This is how you should teach it back, okay? Uh, the first system, the first step of the five steps to build impulse is the introduction. So an icebreaker, which means starting a conversation by breaking the ice. Uh, you use the C factors, which is smiling because it's contagious. Um, you you want to eye contact with the member because it builds trust and enthusiasm cre uh, creates curiosity. Think about a kid uh, when they don't get the best grades at school and the parents ask them like, hey, so how was your day today? Did you get a good grade? And the kid looks down, uh, probably the kid either didn't do well or lying, right? So it should be something simple like, hey, how are you doing today? How's it going? After that, we move into step two, which is the short story, is uh, who we are and what we do. So you want to compare this to a movie trailer. Think about, every, everybody has seen a movie trailer before. So I want you to think about, what does the movie trailer tell you about the movie? It tells you the three, maybe two or three best screenshots or scenes, but it doesn't tell you who's the bad guy or who's the good guy. At the end of the day, it just leaves you with that impulse, right? So the short story is uh, about our product. The best part, the goal of the short story is that we create more interest for the person to want to know more about it. So the only thing you need to know is to keep it short and simple. The more you talk, the more the impulse is going to drop. People normally think about time and money when they're shopping especially, so the less time it takes, the better. The more you talk, the less the impulse will go down. Step three is our presentation, so facts and uh, about the item and pricing. You only want to give them two key facts or three maximum. You don't want to give them 18 things or talk about the warranty and all that kind of stuff. You want to put the product in the person's hands. So this is the advantage that we have towards the online shopping, right? It creates ownership. Think about um, buying jewelry and you wear the ring and you see how it looks like on your finger. Or if you just you know see the ring on a screen or you see it on a display case, it's not the same. Um, think about giving a, a toy to a toddler. It's gonna be hard to get the toy back. The kid's gonna cry because it's gonna feel it's his or, or her toy, right? So it creates ownership. And then you wanna stress the deal, which means that you wanna stress how much the product you would buy online or out of the store, not right here, and how much the, pre the person can get the product for today. So you say the high uh, price first, the retail or online price first, and the low price later. People remember the last thing you say. So the same for dollars and bucks. When you talk about dollars, when you think about dollars, you think about um, spending money. Oh my God, this bill was $400. Uh, but if you think about bucks, it's normally like saving. Like, hey, it was not a bad flight. It only cost me 400 bucks. And then retail versus wholesale. So understanding the price or the people buy in bulk uh, concept. So an example of this would be, Hey, this product on our website, uh, if you go to blah, 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 website.com, it retails for $500. Right now for members or for you guys today, it's only 110 bucks. Uh, that's the stress the deal. Then we move into the close, which is typically the most uncomfortable part of the five steps to a conversation. At the end of the day, this is gonna be more of a conversation than a robotic pitch. So you want to close at the height of the impulse. What the close means, somebody asks you, what is the close? It's basically assuming the sale. So you have to ask a question that includes buying or buying. So this would be, see, if you think about it, it happens in every industry. They tell you when you go to the drive-thru, they don't ask you if you want to pay today, right? <laughs> they ask you cash or credit, right? Um, it happens all the time. Uh, if you're about to buy something at the register, they'll give you something else. They assume that you are buying more things. Uh, so you always want to assume the sale. As soon as you say the word bucks, 110 bucks, that's the trigger word, immediately move into assuming the sale, which would be, so how many of these do you need? Or are you thinking for yourself or somebody else? But if you realize both the times, both the questions, the options are always buying or buying. You want to use the, the word need instead of want because you will buy something you need but not necessarily something you want. And then you want to pitch in multiples, remind people that there's an option to buy more than one. 
think about a time where you uh, you had a limited time offer and there was only a limit of one per person or two per, per, per person. So here there is not, unless we ran out of inventory, you always want to pitch in multiples. If there is no decision, let's say the customer pauses and they're thinking like, they're asking you, well, how long are you going to be here, whatever. When we pause, you want to ask a qualifying question to remind the person or to help them make a decision faster, whether it's a yes or a no. So you pause, um, you ask a question like, hey, well, you did mention that um, you like, you, you come to Sam's Club to save money, right? The person says yes, and then you assume the sale again. So did you need just one or did you need to get two or three, four gifts? Uh, and this applies to whatever the product that we're doing, whether it's um, just say a bear, sheets, whatever item we're doing. Car Keys Express. Um, and then when they say yes, uh, you move into the rehash, which stands for remember that everybody has another sale hidden. Basically, it means to pitch more multiples uh, or if there is the option to introduce a new item. So depending on the campaign, that would be the difference. You have to get, be 10 times more excited because after the close, the impulse drops. So if the impulse is missing when we start in step one, it grows until a short story because you know something about the product. Step three, you get all the way to the height of impulse after understanding the savings, right? The dollars versus bucks. And then step four is the close, which is right here. And then the impulse is gonna drop totally. Step five, you need to get the excitement or the impulse back up, which is why you wanna get 10 times more excited to introduce a bigger, better deal. You do this with indifference. Indifference doesn't mean that you don't care. Indifference is the attitude of understanding that whether they get it or not, we know that is an unbelievable deal. It's a, it's a good price, it's a good value for the person. You never end in a yes, so if somebody takes the product, you always wanna give them the option to get more, and you give them the ideas. Instead of asking, you assume that there's more people. So tell me somebody else in the family that would use these. Instead of, uh, do you know someone else that could use it? You wanna always assume that there is gonna be more yeses. So I'm sure your mom would love this. How many you need for her? And then two no's and go. If the person gives you uh, like a verbal or non-verbal no, and then a second one, you always wanna stop right there and say, hey, no worries, thank you so much. Have a great day. So this is the impulse curve, like I explained earlier. Starts in step one, uh, it moves into step four. At the height of the impulse, you close. So that's why the impulse drops, and that's why you wanna put it again, uh, get more excited so you get the impulse back up. And that's the five steps to a conversation.